So here today we got a video from I'm not sure how to pronounce that name Spliffy, but basically y'all can read what the title is. Let's get into the video. Over the years, Corey Kenshin has built a reputation of not only being one of the biggest gaming channels on YouTube with a sub. Is that is that really Corey back in the day? Bro, he looks way different. Count of over 17 million subscribers. He's also been known for his frequent hiatuses from the platform, where he will abruptly stop uploading for months on end, with more often than not complete radio silence on all of his social medias. Which leads fans to speculate about what he is up to and when he will inevitably return. So why does a YouTuber like Corey Kenshin, with such a big fan base, decide to do this? And more importantly, how has he managed to stay relevant and maintain his viewership when so many others in his genre would quickly be be forgotten about the moment they stop uploading before we i mean it makes sense right i mean he could uh, reason why he do it because he can second thing is i mean as for why he his video content stay up there is because i mean let's be real now it's cory kenshin everybody know the name plus i mean, he made great content uh, i watched cory kenshin okay now the hiatus is i mean I, that's that that hurts sometimes but i mean it's 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 obvious it's because he can he can do it it's cory kenshin and also he make good content like it doesn't really matter how much you upload if you upload a little bit if you upload a lot if you make great content then you're gonna upload whatever you want mr beast make good content uploads once a month cory kenshin makes good content uploads about like once a year at this point um, was I think uh history historian? I'm not really sure how to pronounce the name, but I like that one video I did see from him. I realized that he uploaded about like once every couple of months or a year, to be honest. It's just like if you can make good content, people will return. Before we get to that though, we have to figure out why Corey Kenshin is so. And my content is the best, so make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe if you do inconsistent with his upload schedule in the first place. To answer that, I decided to go all the way back to when he first started uploading content back in 2009, almost 15 years ago. His first Dang. couple of videos are about what you would expect from that time period. Skits and vlogs typically filmed on a low quality webcam with pretty minimal editing. Corey would upload this style of content on and off with pretty minimal results with a couple of well-performing videos here and there, but for the most part, he would not really see any major success with this style of content, which is the main reason why on September 30th, 2011, Corey would post his final video before a two-year hiatus from the platform, the first of many to come, and something that will be important for later in the video. When Corey came back to YouTube in 2013, he began to upload his first few gameplay videos, more specifically, horror gameplays, something that was growing in popularity on YouTube at the time. This was also around the time his channel started to gain momentum, but there was one game in particular that would push his channel's growth to new heights, that game being Five Nights at Freddy's. The game was exploding in popularity at the time, and the amount of YouTube Let's Players that were playing the game and displaying it to their audience were only adding fuel to the fire, so combine the fact that you're already known for being a horror gameplay YouTuber, and a game that's rapidly growing in popularity in your own niche that you're well known for, and you have the recipe for a viral video. And this year- I didn't even- to be honest, I did not know Corey, like- was first started out with that type of concept in the first place. But then after that was like doing gameplay videos. See, it's always that like, so it's always that one video that will make you pop off. Now, I need to find that one video because I want more of the Wolfies to join, okay? We got, we got, we got a couple, but we need more, we need more. I wanna have an army. Uh, or, anyway. The series would prove to be widely successful for Corey as they would gain millions of views and gain him a ton of new subscribers. And from that point on, Corey would remain consistent with his upload schedule, usually posting every day. This would lead his channel to reach 100,000 subscribers by late 2015. It was also at this point where his channel would that much and what the six months later would start growing even more rapidly about six months what? later he hit 500,000 subscribers and then he closed out 2016 with a million and this was only the beginning as his channel only got more popular with every single passing year however it's important to note that during this time period Corey would become notorious for his breaks from YouTube he would have a hot streak where he would upload daily and then seemingly disappear for months on end with usually no updates on any of his social media 
media platforms, leading fans to guess about when he would come back. Then at random, he would go right back to uploading and the cycle would just continue. In 2018, he took a four month break at the beginning of the year and also two more shorter ones just in that year alone. So what exactly was the reason for all these abrupt hiatuses from YouTube? Now, while he may have different reasons for each one, I think it's pretty safe to assume that creative burnout was a major factor in this. Now, usually when a YouTube channel starts growing rapidly, the next step for that YouTuber would be to hire an editor to handle all the video editing work that goes into a video so that the YouTuber would have more time for different things, like recording more content or handling merch drops or sponsorships, all of the typical business that comes with running a YouTube channel. That is true, that is true. Like me, I don't got an editor. Also, because I can't afford to pay an editor for each video that I upload. So, I'll, but like most big YouTubers, yeah, they have editors and they have like, so that way, because it makes it easier, right? Like if you sit there, edit the videos and upload like every day or like well, however long, that's going to take way longer than you making the videos, moving it over to somebody else. Well, then you can make more of the videos and then by the time that video done, then the editor gives you your video so you can upload it and you give them three more videos and they edit those three videos. You give them back, you pay him, then three more videos. Then you got, then you also talk to the sponsors as well. While also if you have merch doing merch, but it's the merch store can kind of run itself once you get it up there. And then next thing you know, you get, you out there working with sponsors, making sure one's real and fake while making new videos, adding the sponsors into the videos, moving up to the editor, the editor moves it back to the YouTube channel or to you so you can upload it on the YouTube channel. Kind of depends on if you know cool enough with your editor to give them the permission to like actually log into your accounts and all that, which I think no one should do. And no matter like if your editor is your friend, no. But channel. yeah. But Corey Kenshin was a rare exception to this because even as his channel grew and the demand for more consistent high quality content increased, he never hired an editor. He always did everything himself and his reasoning behind this decision and that is rare on YouTube. According to him is because he prefers his own style of editing and actually enjoys doing it too, which is a completely fair reason as it gives him complete control of how his videos are gonna look. But the downside to this is that there is a lot of editing that goes into each of Corey's videos, which can be very time consuming to do and stressful when taking into account the fact that he usually uploads daily when he's not on break. So he has to plan the video, spend hours recording it, then on top of all of that, spend some more hours editing which to someone who isn't a content creator might not sound like much, but if you're a YouTuber, you know that shit is absolutely exhausting sometimes. Facts, facts. Like what? Like thinking of the video, then uploading and editing it. That could take, like, some people probably think it's, oh, it's about like, that could probably take about like 30 to 40 minutes. Nah, nah, that... That video can take almost about two to three hours even before it even like gets to the upload process. Then once it do get to the upload process, then it probably take about another about like 10, 20, maybe 30 minutes. Cause then you gotta think of a title, you gotta make a thumbnail, and then you gotta like do the tags and what tags gonna be in there, yada yada. It's it's a lot that go into this. And obviously I know that because I I'm gonna be honest, I used to upload every day. And I got that burned out just like him. Cause like what? Like that daily upload of like back back in like when the channel was like real low. Uploaded every day, had to think about it, had to think what to do, upload, make the video, edit the video, upload it, make the thumbnail as well, and then start over again the next day. And you do that for a couple of days, that that gets super tiring. Next thing you know, you feel like you about to just drown and like, you know, like I got to think of something. And then if you run out of stuff to think about, then it's like, okay, how I'm, either I'm just not going to upload today or I'm going to just have to make some cause and hope that it matches the same hype as my other ones. Times. Now, my personal opinion, if something is your job and it's how you make your money, then leaving for half a year just because you're a bit tired of the content grind doesn't it's really not. make too much sense. It would honestly be better if he either uploaded only a few times a week or just decided to hire a video editor at that point. Because imagine someone who worked a 9 to 5 job, if they just decided to leave for months on end and just came back to work one day like nothing was out of the ordinary. He would probably be fired right there on the spot. But Corey knows he can get away with leaving YouTube 
because he knows his viewers will wait for his return and his viewership will stay the same, if not only increase. This is because Corey Kenshin is pretty much immune to becoming irrelevant, and this is for a few reasons. The first one being that he's already quite well known for taking breaks because he's been doing it for years at this point. His viewers will see that he hasn't uploaded in a while and just assume he's on break and will return just like he has every single time. These hiatuses have unintentionally built a cult-like fan base of people who are always left wanting more from him before I express my opinion to those of you who can't seem to handle when, crit when criticism gets sent Corey's way, I suggest you skip this post and keep it pushing. Through the years, I've interacted with enough of Corey fans that don't seem to grasp the simple concept of me being totally okay with Corey taking a break. But anyways, end up, but always end up disappointed with his communication to his fan base. Notifying your fan base of taking long breaks is the bare minimum and they never know when he's gonna come back either because he just doesn't update his fans when he's gone. It's actually a psychology trick from the 48 Laws of Power that rappers like Playboy Cardi have even used to their advantage. The second reason is that his content has a huge replayability factor. Videos that he uploaded years ago are still being discovered by people who have never watched him before. They start binging his content and they eventually subscribe and then they wait until he posts a new video, which is actually how he was able to reach 10 million subscribers without posting posting a single video in that time period. The third reason is that he's honestly just too big to fail at this point. Corey Kenshin's fame has reached a point where he's become somewhat of a household name. I'm not joking, literally almost everyone in my high school knew who Corey was. So just imagine how popular he is for the younger generation and just how much of an impact he has on them. I mean, he just made a cameo in the new Five Nights at Freddy's movie, so there's definitely no question that he's at least pretty well known. And those are pretty much the reasons why he can't really fall off at this point. At the time of this recording, it's already been over half a year since he last uploaded, yet he could probably upload a video tomorrow and it would probably go on the trending page with millions of views. So it looks like Corey Kenshin will most likely come back to YouTube soon because he knows he has a very loyal fan base that will always wait for him no matter how long he's gone for. And he'll probably also take even more breaks after that if we're being completely honest here. But there's no doubt that when it comes to YouTube, Corey Kenshin is one of the most influential gaming creators out there. And when it's all said and done and he eventually leaves for good he'll definitely be remembered for quite a long time welcome to oh yeah oh yeah definitely definitely uh first of all i just love what i gotta add there but other than that i mean that was a good video that was a pretty good video y'all should go like subscribe to him and also like show some love and all that but like basically cory kenshin i mean it makes sense it makes sense he's one yeah it makes sense he's too big to fill two He's, yeah, he's a household name. Even I knew who he was back then. And three, I mean, I didn't even know. First of all, the 48 Laws of Power, I didn't know that was in the thing. I don't know if that's what he does exactly to even, like, like that's why he do it. But it does make sense. Like, if you do something for, like, a consistent point and then just break out of nowhere, then people are going to be like, what the heck? Where's going on? Uh, no, no update, no nothing. And then you come back like nothing's, like nothing happened. Most people... Like most people channels, that would destroy them. Some people channels can actually get away with it. Like I said again, like I mean, Mr. Beast does it to a point. He uploads only once a month, and then you got Corey Kenshin that literally does like that same thing, and it gets a lot of views. And every time he come back, he will also get more views, and that's how I mean it makes sense why he keeps leaving youtube and because well first dumb videos do have a lot of editing in it so just doing that every day oh my gosh but other than that it's like it makes sense why they never leave because they actually low fan bases and every youtuber wishes for that even me but anyway other than that make sure you guys like comment subscribe if you're new don't forget to share the video guys and also keep subscribe and share so that way we can get bigger you know i'll try to hit 1k by the end of this year and don't forget become a woofy bro fuzz bro that's what i'm calling my fan base y'all now woofies and all i gotta say is i love you guys give me a howl in the comment section and i see y'all peace out Ow! why the hell did i just howl